Good morning, land of YouTube. Donnie Caustic here, bringing a little light this time. Haha, <laughs> look at that little light back there. Oh, there's headlights. They're moving lights. Oh no. <laughs> I'm getting a jump start on the day. Uh, I normally leave closer to six, but today it's uh, like 5.30 uh, almost. And, um, you know, I got up deep in thought. And um, I like to focus on what's in front of me or behind me in this respect. There's a couple little lights. <laughs> Has anybody ever seen little lights in the sky? You know, they call it ball lightning. And it's... Uh, like a ball of light that bounces around and that the definition is ball lightning or dry lightning it can just happen and it's like static balls that run around and fucking oh you can interpret it as like a ufo or something too there's movies and the fourth kind and uh interpreting some weird ass shit that's unexplainable and then the fire in the sky which is a alien abduction movie that's unexplainable I saw one time uh, back in the day with my father and uh, Kevin Wiles, his, um, he would call him his blood brother. And um, that's like my uncle. He died of liver cirrhosis from drinking too much. My whole fucking family's been stuck in a goddamn curse of learned behavior that ends up, you know, just being a, a denial from facing the things that hurt inside and it leads to addiction to a uh, substance that'll fill that hole. And anyways, um, in any ways, in any case, I'm not gonna go too far into that right now. But the um, lights in the sky thing, Kevin and my father and I witnessed, I fucking was watching this thing bounce around in patterns and uh, it's a light in the sky. And I ran away thinking I was going to get anal probed. <laughs> I was young. <laughs> it's pretty fucking funny if you think about it. Because of all the mythologically incorrect alien things about being anal probed by an alien. Like, they, we, come, <laughs> we come to face <laughs> some kind of alien entity. And all they want to do is look up our ass. <laughs> and then I think, how many people walk around with their head up their ass and they're already there? They're like, their head's so far up their ass they don't even know they're in shit creek. <laughs> and they can't face the bullshit inside of them. They want to look outside and try to fix other people. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, you stupid motherfucker. <laughs> oh my God. The way my mind work is works is so stupid. And, um, and then I have a ha bad habit of getting caffeinated. <laughs> and then... If I'm not careful, I can completely skip words. <laughs> oh my God. That's called a fast mind. When you're thinking more than your mouth can move, then it's like, hold on. Is the cart before the horse or the horse before the cart? Now we have to really think when we talk. It's actually mostly effortless with me when I remain calm. And I'm really not doing a lot of thinking. It just kind of flows out of me, whatever whatever I tend to experience um, it's it's really kind of an effortless process of no longer thinking I know that a, a lot of times I've struggled through life with having to force memories or having to think and it's really nice to be able to remember everything in a way that you know I have instant recall to most all of my life experiences and most all of the knowledge that I crammed into my head that's a fucking blessing trust me well and also a curse because I do have access to a shit ton of knowledge uh, I'd say a shit ton because there's a wealth of knowledge that I crammed into my head over the years that most people don't even want to go look at or study and there's ignorance is bliss. That's a that's a subtle truth, because there is a um, a really really chaotic place to exist that would be like dumb, basically. You know, if you stay blind to the truth and you really don't want to know the 
true nature of anything and you just go around and you do your go through the motions your your life right then that would kind of be like a metaphorical heavenly place to exist because you're you're not even challenging yourself you just blah I never liked that idea at all I wanted to learn more and more and more I I've always looked deeper into everything and that continues today like I am constantly deeper into a narrative basically with myself I mean right now I'm talking to a fucking phone no one's here just me I'm walking on a you know alternate path to breakfast location to randomly get some kind of food because it's spicy it's like a uh, spicy to me it's an unknown variable so the variant outcome for my breakfast is up to someone else's interpretation of what they think I would like and they don't really know me I mean they've met me a few times how cool is that it's like let's add some randomosity in our life I like that I think of Jim Carrey's movie yes man <laughs> where he's like I'll just say yes to everything and it changed his life dramatically right he started with the guru and then it turned out the guru was bullshit <laughs> if you haven't seen yes man go watch it it's fucking dope I mean I make a lot of correlations to shit I've experienced through life because I see a deeper meaning behind everything uh, I look really deep into shit um, everybody that I've experienced it's normal or so they have a tendency to, you know, face value shit. They just, oh, well, it's art, or it's a good movie, or it's music, and they have no idea the deeper, subtle meanings behind things in life, because they don't want to, and for good reason. They're happy, they're comfortable. It's a blessing to be like that, I guess. To not have to think would be a fucking blessing, sort of. In my opinion, it's not for me, but I can see how it fits for others. And then I say, well, if you're not thinking and you're walking around, try not to do any harm at least, please. Because a lot of times people that don't think are fucking stupid. And the stupidity breeds. And then you have dumb hurting dumb. And then you have dumb hurting good. And you have people running around doing dumb shit everywhere. And then I look at some of the fucking rap music. I've even made some rap videos and lyrics that I just invent off the top of my head to fit in with you know, a crowd to grab attention. And I listen to the state of it, and I'm like, this is pretty fucking degrading. But it's bringing things to light, right? It's like, hold on, it's in the background of everybody. You're gonna like it, because I like it. And then you, get, you run into the programming of our youth. Our youth is learning all of this shit, like, full blast. And then it's like, oh cool, they're the youth of the nation, they're gonna be our leaders. Well, what kind of nation do we really want? Can we subtly program our youth in a different respect to where there's a lot more self-love and care and light and um, respect for others and humans? And then can we take these great individuals that are little youth, youths, <laughs> and can we you know, program them, them in a way of, oh my God, like, just teach them gardening in school, teach them how to survive, make gardens mandatory so there's world hunger ending. Everybody has to have a garden in front of their house. No more hunger. Everybody shares like a community garden. Then, you know, you, you graduate school with, with a bank account with a lot of money in it because you've earned money during your schooling. And, um, you know, you already have good credit because that's an also a, a focus that you learn in school. And within a year of graduating school, you can go to either a graduate program to go further in schooling, or you can go to like buy a home within one year of graduating. Wouldn't that be a fucking dream come true? I think society would look a lot different. There would be no layers of struggle. There would be no little guy doing all the meaningless shit. Everybody would be doing it together as a fucking team. That's my fucking picture for the future. Oh, and then there's also Apple cars, Apple everything. You have an Apple house, Apple appliances, an Apple car that takes you to work, goes home, docks itself, charges, comes back at lunch with your lunch because it stops by the fucking restaurant on the way. And then, the, you know, the human or whoever brings the food out, 
puts it in the passenger side of the vehicle for you. And the car comes, brings you lunch, and takes you to your lunch spot. And then the car goes home, docks itself. It, doesn't that sound like some kind of like minority report with Tom Cruise? I, I think so. I mean, I got a pretty good imagination on my shoulders, you know, walking around. And I say, I have a very vivid, grand imagination that I use to create things, you know? Uh, that's where creation really stems from. It stems from an active, vivid imagination. And I have a great one. I've always been that way. I've seen things that other people don't, be it angles. I've gone through a lot of shit in my life to come out this way. And I think that that's probably the only rightful, respectful way to achieve greatness is to actually suffer through a shit ton of suffering. And collectively, the world goes through a massive suffering recently, right? Several layers of that. And I think the outcome is going to be a beneficial change for all of humanity. I don't think that. I know that. I can see it. But I'm really worried that I'd like, I would like to force the progress along so dramatically that it rocks the foundation of people's existence basically like I can walk into a situation and just blast somebody with information right and then they go dink 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 and they have a meltdown and they look at me and they go oh I feel bad for you I'm like um really in in reality you actually feel bad for yourself because you just identified with some things that you you know you need to face because of real information that you were exposed to and then these individuals that I run into with that narrative, just like that, fuck, they can't take it. It's like, they go, who the fuck are you, dude? Who the fuck do you think you are to walk up to me and tell me exactly what you're telling me? And it's case by case. Like, I'm a, a quick study with people. I have naturally, oh my God, I've been in three homes a day on average for my whole adult life, actually from the age of roughly 15. And during that process, I've been studying people, you know, in their natural environment. So I've seen like most of Northern California and most of Northern Nevada in their homes. Now, people are fucking all over the place when it comes to A, a chaotic mess, B, super disciplined and organized with OCD complexes. Let's skip around a bunch. doesn't matter if it's the A, B, C, D shit. It's like X, Y, and Z. I'm just joking. Let's jump to the end. The conclusion is everybody's different. No one's exactly the same. There are very similar characteristics that I could try to stereotype. The things I see as um, not successful or successful are this. Most every environment that has substance abuse or substance that they don't deem as abuse, substance in general, I see dysfunction. Then I see highly successful disciplined people, maybe with an OCD complex, but they're with another paired individual that picks up the slack when the other person, you know, so it's complimentary. They find their match. And that's how they have a 50 year old relationship, marriage. They compliment each other. Most people don't want to look for a compliment they want to stick with something that's garbage. And maybe we're paired by destiny with mates that are there for a reason to teach us something about ourselves and themselves. So we can complement each other and maybe heal through this fucking crazy growth process we know as life. Some people are very difficult individuals to get to though. A lot of times we run through life and we find you know, the person we mate with is identical to one of our parents. Now, either it's a loving parent or it's an abusive parent, depending on your product, like uh, the product of your environment, basically. Your product, the, what you came from. Because you are a product of your environment. Growing up, every single thing that we experience as human beings collectively is absorbed by our 
psyche, our subconscious, our ego. It's like all of these things. And then the shadow is all the shit we don't want to face, so to and we're quote unquote, so to speak. Shadow would be, you know, everything in the background of our fucking mind, our subconscious mind that uh, fears build up, right? The things we can't face, the things we're dishonest to ourselves about, they all build up, build up, build up, build up. Then there's a volcano moment, or there isn't, and it's just continual suffering at your own hands, basically. You just go through fucking loops, patterns, repeated behavior, learned behavior, and then either you're the abuser or you're the victim. And that's kind of black and white when you look at it like that. And so... My message that I'm continually expressing is that of we don't have to do this alone. We can, we can do life with other humans and we can live together in harmony. All we have to do is reach out to our neighbor. There's community that exists currently and there's people that are real and they, they agree with people or they don't, but they're still friends, right? I look at all this dumb bullshit online, social media connecting everybody. It's a beautiful blessing and a curse because people get a head on their shoulders and they're like, well, I don't like what he's posting, so I'm going to block him. It's like, are you fucking for reals? You've known me for 20 years in real life. You're my fucking family or my friend. You, you, you find what I'm talking about controversial, so now you're going to end the relationship? Maybe it's controversial because you needed to fucking look at it, you stupid idiot. That's what I say. And then I say, if you can't keep up with me, too bad, so sad. Sorry, turtle. Too slow. Your mind don't process shit. And then is that bad to say, well, kind of. It's kind of mean. Kind of derogatory. I don't try to be derogatory normally. It's a, a bit degrading saying that, oh, other people don't operate this fast. But there's also a truth to it. Like, I operate at a, a speed upstairs that <laughs> the way I process things, most humans do not process this way. Like, I have a very brilliant mind. And it collectively expresses itself through my actions now versus just verbal. I don't just talk. I'm on a fucking walk right now. I'm looking for interaction with people maybe of this nature over here. Maybe not. You know, people that could use a message of love or direct measures to look at themselves because they're in a spot of suffering possibly. But if they're happy, I leave them the fuck alone. They tell me they're happy, I'm like fine, you are happy, good job, stay there. If they say I'm not and they're being honest, I'll point them in a direction that they can immediately use to better their life. Doesn't mean they're gonna take it it doesn't mean they're actually going to hear me, but the way I directly confront shit, it's pretty fucking real. And I see that my path that I'm on, literally and metaphorically, as a way to run into individuals that can benefit from knowledge. Because that's the only way anybody changes. You learn something, you get smarter, and you grow. Sometimes it's painful, sometimes it's not. But yeah, everybody changes themselves ultimately. So if there's, a, um, if there's somebody that wants to change and they're looking for help, they can find it, you know? All they have to do is start learning. And the, the biggest thing is to learn about yourself. Because in a truth, it all stems to like a saying that we are our own best doctors. Now, that would be mental health, you know, your mental faculties. If your mental faculties are in order, then your faculty operates in order. Cool, huh? It's like, um, you know, it's, a, it's like a posable idea that we can govern ourselves from within and have discipline in our life and then chaos dissipates some uh, to where... You know, we have composure and self-control and, you know, it, it's a love for ourself that can be expressed outwards to basic humanity everywhere, you know. You can carry a message of love. It doesn't matter what the fuck you look like. 
I mean, you see it in artistry all the time. A, gr a great amount of famous people that have love and compassion in their heart for human race. And they express it. And then they go out and do good works through their art, through their acting, through their music, through their interaction with the public. You know, it, 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 there's an immediate need for love in this world. And it's always present. It's ever present because there's a lot of people that don't really, or they're not ready to really face themselves. They don't get up in the morning and they don't look at themselves the way that they need to, you know? Honestly, they hide. They hide from them fucking selves. I, that's my observation based on what the fuck I've been seeing my whole life. And then I no longer choose to look at that. So guess what? I don't really find it anymore. I know it's there, I see it, but I don't find it in my path. I find something different now. I find others with a purpose to share knowledge with. I find others with the similar mind that I run into. And we have deep conversations. We have loving interactions. And it's fucking brilliant and it's awesome. And then I go on a walk and I run into somebody that needs help and I can deliver some kind of useful information to that individual right there in that moment. And I think that's a fucking blessing. That's a miracle. I, I really do. My whole life, I've struggled, struggled, struggled through what would look like such a mess, knowing something greater was at hand. The whole goddamn time, just knowing that if I hadn't had, and it's not a regretful thing, but if things were different from the gate, I knew I would have been one thing. But I had to go through and experience a lot of suffering and pain and trauma at my own hands and others in order to be able to relate and value a gift, something so great that, I mean, it's, it's fucking ridiculous, this gift that I have. And I owe that. To the creator, you know? And I look at the idea that creation itself is the creator. And I know that that sounds a little crazy or hard to wrap your mind around, but every single great expression through time has tried to point people in the right direction of looking inward to find out who we really are not a lot of people are willing and able to do that. They have so many barriers and they can't get through these barriers. I consider those self-imposed limitations. It doesn't matter what we're externally submitted to. It's all self-imposed limitations. And if they are self-imposed, then what the fuck was there anyway? Like, if you can remove that and you find a true self or mind, the whole mind, like the mind mentality, or all mentality, and then you think, well, I am. And then it's like, I think therefore I am, right? <laughs> There's so many profound things that tie together. I've studied. I can only wish everybody else would study too. So, if you're watching this, this video, and it's a message that reaches out to you, or you hear something useful, run with it, please, run with it. Because that's the only hope I have for the individual watching this. And if, you know, I think there's a competitive nature afloat that kind of is like a blocker. So if, for instance, I think I'm better than everybody else, in which case I don't, I'm open to uh, constant interpretation and external influence, which is different perspective. But I, I would challenge the fact that if someone thinks they know everything or more, they're like, oh, you're not telling me anything I haven't learned. I would say strike up a conversation with me and we can get in depth on some topics that would be great to bounce my mind off of yours. And I tell you that because there's some depth that not a lot of people are willing to face. I can shine some light on that. I promise you. 
there's some things you know there's there's levels and layers that I'm observing daily to this depth of knowledge and um, with that in mind it's deepening it keeps deepening it's very profound and as I go into these different circles of awareness with individuals that have a like-minded consciousness well I'm kind of just swimming through them in a way it's a progress in motion and oh my god part of that is an overview and not a lot of people are really ready for the kind of power that comes with knowledge on the level of greatness so I'm doing my best to maintain composure and express that in a healthy manner and not everybody's gonna even watch this thick video to 25 minute mark you know 26 minutes 30 minutes I put these valuable messages out there in a vain attempt for the individual that's actually willing to watch through and listen and hear something that's going to trigger thought, provoking thought out of them. Does that make me provocational? Fuck yeah, it does. Am I fucked up for that? Maybe. The whole place is fucked up, though. We can look around at it. And then, ultimately, if we take responsibility for ourselves and our creative aspects, it's a, it's a weird place to exist in, I'll tell you that. Not a lot of people are willing to go there. I got some direct things I could poke at anybody. And then they're immediately confronted with a yes or no. And a lot of people so far have said no. I would be honest. They don't want to know. Because it's kind of a, a blissful place to exist in when you're not aware of so much, you know. If you're just like a... A kid running around, so to speak, with no idea of the rules and regulations around you until they get imposed upon you by your parents or whoever's guiding you through life at a young age. And if you stay in that mentality, what could really harm you? You know, you stay in this childlike, innocent bliss, and then you get older, and then you add substance and you're in a cloud and you're delusional. <laughs> you just look around and then you see everything that's wrong and you're like, oh, I'm going to fucking tell you. And they don't really, anybody like that, they don't really see that it actually is them looking outward at themselves and they can't face the things that they really want to change within themselves. So they point it out and call it out on others. That's projecting your own bullshit onto everybody else. That's how the world gets into a mess. And that's what I don't agree with. I don't agree with it at all. So my direct measures for change would be putting up a mirror in front of them and exposing people to themselves. They don't like that shit. No one does. There's people that get very uncomfortable. There's people that get aggressive. There's people that get quiet. There's people that get scared. I've had people break down and start crying and just start confessing shit to me. And I'm, I'm excited because that's good work. It really is. It's fucking daily good work. And um, it's painfully real to be this real in a world that's so fucking fake. And that's an Alice in Wonderland quote with it, my own spin. So this morning I'm just having a, another one of the healthy warrior drinks in a minute. I'm going to my breakfast location in a few I do believe I'm going to run into an individual that's homeless on this trail and probably have a chat. I have some work to do also. I have to be down in Danville area uh, by around 8. So I just got to jump start on my exercise. And you know what's funny is even this observation right here. See these fencings? These were placed by... You know, the, the county or the city in an attempt to keep homeless out of here. So they're going to be criminally trespassing. See this? 
it's sided with a, a p penal code section 602 PC. Now, that penal code states that anybody willfully trespassing can be removed and imprisoned or confinement with uh, whatever limitation. Now, the limitation of their confinement can also be amplified by previous violations, right? So they have priors, and then it adds up. Now we have the mentality that, well, we're really trying to change the place. So people that are struggling like this, they can go to some kind of encampment, which would be jail or an institution. My idea would be one big giant one, clean up everybody that's having a problem and retrain them somehow. I see shock collars, I see vending machines with the drug of choice. I see, you know, healthy measures to earn points in order to get to that vending machine and get your stuff. And then I see a study. How long does it take somebody learning healthy things, be it their diet, their scheduling, their knowledge base, exercise? How long does it take somebody doing all these healthy things to get what they don't want that's ill health, right? I mean, they really don't want to be ill but they're doing it anyway. So they go to the vending machines after they learn all these things. And I want to see how long it takes somebody in that kind of a cycle to snap the fuck out of it and go, this is no good for me. I'm, I'm killing myself. Then you could look at fucking society or the overlay for society is the same goddamn thing. It's like a lottery ticket. Either you win or you don't, right? You can end up, if you make the wrong choices in life as a young person, you could really literally end up, end up like sleeping on the ground like that outside. Maybe there's a freedom to it. That person probably feels free. But if it's motivated by substance, are they really free? Or are they a prisoner in their own goddamn mind? I don't like cages. Never have. So maybe my idea for sticking people into an encampment and then this whole place, the way everything works and the way the, the layers work within our structured society and the way that people are oblivious to others and they hold their head up high and they drive by and they see all the goddamn trauma around them and they don't, don't do anything. Or they do. You know, it's a hit and miss. There's the kind of person that would be codependent and always giving money to that individual that's using the money for drugs. And they're like, well, it's because they're asking for it. I myself find honesty valuable. So if I ask, what are you going to use this money for? And they say, I'm going to use it for a beer. I'll say, like I did the other day to a Hispanic man, I said, cerveza la muerte. And I gave him the $2 he wanted because he was honest with me. And I told him that the beer is death. And I pointed to my mind because I don't know mind in Spanish. Like, como se dice mind in uh, Espanol? I don't know. I never learned that word. <coughs> wow moisture from the dew oh that's good i find that walking really cleans out my sinuses and my lungs especially in the early morning dew breathing moisture is good so you know anyways Honesty is a really big key factor in, in change and growth. Um, I think that's the main focus somewhat with today's video. I'm almost at 35 minutes. I'm probably going to let everybody go in a second and just say peace, love, light, and happiness <laughs> with a, a melancholy spin. I'm not depressed. It, it can be viewed as like a depressive state of mind being very knowledgeable and a lot of people say it's a long it's a lonely road or lonely existence at the top and it can be viewed like that you know if you have no contrast you haven't been through some shit in life then you know if you're just everything's effortless yeah you can be a really fucking lonely person and then what are you going to find you've had just an easy path the whole goddamn time that suck but it happens so everybody faces challenges and struggles in a different way. And I see that as a, an area that I can, you know, exploit for improvement. Just to show someone something. Maybe to humble them or humble myself in the process. 
Okay, well, I love you all. Stay up, stay lit, and uh, infect the world with love and light. Peace.